I'm Chosen Architect, and this is the Stonopolis Mod Pack. So today is the big day, the day that we take on the Wither, but it's probably going to be a little bit less dramatic than that, as we're going to cheese this bad boy. And yes, I know you're saying, but Chosen, why would you want to cheese this thing? Just try and fight it on your own. And to that, I will say, why do things harder when you can do things smarter? The truth is, I'm just really scared of the Wither and I don't want to die. No, in all seriousness, this is going to be a pretty simple task. However, we do have to make it to the roof of this world. And it kind of only works because of the way this roof is actually designed. So let's first start by just getting to the roof. So if we set this to a escape tunnel, uh, we can make this quite easy. I just need to excavate this, this, and this. And we now should have roughly an easy path all the way up to the roof. Oh yeah, and we're definitely gonna hit a cave or two, but that's fine. You can just light up the area and also grab any glow lichen that you may actually find in here because glow lichen has a beautiful use. It can be converted into glow berries and glow berries are definitely useful. By the way, we should be able to just one shot this skeleton. Yeah, this sword's insane. Hey, look, there's some glow lichen. Glowberries, by the way, in immersive engineering can be put in a garden cloche and you can turn that into ethanol, which is going to be a way to technically get biodiesel, which can generate about 4,000 RF per tick or power per tick. So now once I get all the way up here, notice how the bedrock ceiling is sort of staggered. And this is going to be important to actually setting up the wither up here and taking it out. So I recommend clearing out an area and looking for something very specific. So if you're familiar to actually taking on the wither, utilizing the nether roof, you're gonna be pretty familiar with how this functions as well. So we are looking for a very specific kind of pocket. And now this right here is roughly what I'm looking for. So I basically just need a three by three of bedrock that appears to be too deep. And so this right here should work. And so what I wanna do is I want to get the wither in this spot right here. And so I need to be basically spawn the wither within this two block gap. Um, and so we have plenty of space, I think. Yeah, I should be able to get, I think the skulls. Yeah, I can place everything right here and the wither should spawn right into this block. And the wither should be able to get its big old head stuck up into the ceiling. Now, the way that I wanna set this up is I wanna make sure that this has a two block gap. So I went ahead and got my resources set up and the spawn platform is going to be the obsidian right here. So underneath is going to be the base of the platform and then we're gonna lay out the look of the wither. So just like this laying on its side. And that's important because we're about to build this thing and we are going to need this to work. Um, so it has to be two blocks just like that. And if I go ahead and build up, I need to get myself a little bit of a platform to sort of stand on. So that way I can also try to take out the wither to make this go faster. Cause I think it will take damage on its own. This is a tried and true method that's been used for a very long time. So we place down our soul sand and hopefully nothing fails on us. I mean, if anything, we do have some pretty decent gear, but all right, here we go. Three, two, one, summon this bad boy and let's hope he gets his head stuck up here. And it should work just like it would underneath the end portal. Now this is going to still blast and it's going to take damage. So I need to be prepared for that. And there we go. Oh God. Yeah, it's, it's loud but we should be able to chomp away. There we go. And this is perfect. And it is now gone and flopping around. But there we go. We have now taken on the wither and we can just continue to spawn them here over and over again for as many nether stars as we need. So now that we have ourselves a nether star, this opens up a new chapter called Star Power. And you can see we're working our way through this bad boy. And this right here, so we get it from killing the wither, but we need to turn this into nether star fragments. So fragments of the star and we get four extra and it looks like, oh yes, we're getting into flux networks with this. Oh, that is so nice that we can use this for flux networks. And it does seem like we might be end up, uh, might be killing a few more of these. Now, 
You don't have to kill it on the roof. You can kill it by hand if you absolutely want to. You can kill it up on the roof. Or you can also make yourself a mob uh, a crusher, and a mob crusher with a range upgrade would also take this guy out. However, you would probably want to make like an obsidian box because it does seem like the uh, the witherproof blocks, they have removed them uh, from this. Um, so that is something to consider. I honestly have no idea why the dark glass has been removed from the Industrial Foregoing mod in this pack. But I digress, and right now we're going to be making ourselves some fragments. So we get to break our nether star down into some bits and pieces. And uh, like I said, this leads us into a, a supreme machine frame, which this typically... Interesting. This typically requires ether gas, which you would get from trapping wither farts. I know, it... it it's just as weird sounding as it actually is, but the quest apparently leads us into using purified water instead, which is what we've been using for our sieves, by the way. And these are just basically the advanced machines, which are already kind of a pain enough to get, and then putting all of this together. So these aren't actually that that bad. And of course, none of this will be super bad once we get our applied energistic system fully up and operational with auto crafting. Now, the ultimate goal of today is to hopefully enter into the colored caves because there is a portal here. And as soon as we make this machine frame, it looks like we can make the colored portal, which just relies on some colored stone in this frame. So this will be a new place that we get access to. And I'm pretty excited about that. Now there is a fluid laser here, which talks about getting ether gas from the wither, which is those the fart collections that I was talking about earlier. And then we also gain access to farming souls from the warden. And this one is very special. This allows you to tick accelerate things, which is insanely powerful. And I wonder how expensive it is. It's not too bad to make the soul pipes. And I wonder how bad the connectors are. Yeah, that's not bad at all. And the block itself just requires an advanced frame. So in reality, all of these things are pretty straightforward. You will, however, need to be able to power stasis chamber uh, for both uh, farming the ether gas and also over here farming the warden. Actually, you need two for the warden, if I remember correctly. Now, taking a look at flux dust. Whew, that's a that's a stout recipe right there. Very, very, uh, very, very expensive recipe. But, um, I mean, this is a way to technically have wireless charging, and it also allows us to get power from this dimension over into our void dimension or any other dimension, basically unlocking the ability for us to increase our infrastructure in those dimensions. So I've been pushing, and I think I have everything ready to go. I made two more of these advanced machine frames. These are, these are just still so expensive just because of these gearboxes alone. Uh, but we should now be able to craft this. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the items required in here for this next particular craft. And then I need that purified water. So the purified water comes from the purifying mulch. And if we remember correctly, it's just made with the, the regular mulch. So we're gonna need two mulches and then we're gonna need our purifying salt mulch uh, and then a bucket. So we just need to grab a bucket and I should be able to hand place that fluid in. So I'll just right click this, grab the fluid, and now we have that and we can place that in and that is what we need. Now, right now I have my pink slime back here. I'm gonna go ahead and place that back. I just need to make another tank and then I can have a place to put this purified water in. And there we go. So we now have the, the Supreme Machine Frame. Typically this recipe, by the way, would require ether gas but they have changed it in this, which is kind of nice. And that is going to allow me to make my way into a new dimension. So now without further ado, because I don't want to wait, I want to get into this dimension as soon as possible. Let's see what this place has to offer. This is the colored caves. So it says create the colored caves portal in which we have done. It says enter the colored caves um, using the colored caves portal. You have, uh, so have you unlocked all of the colors yet? I think we have unlocked all of the colors, or at least we should have. I mean, at least I hope we have. Um, and can I just place this like so? <laughs> oh, I can. Oh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious. Okay, I guess we just, we just right click on it. Ooh. As it slowly generates in, this place is epic. Okay, my new home. 
<laughs> oh, this should be my new home. This is way better than what I was just in. This, this place is fantastic. It's slowly but surely generating, but look at all of the stone and all of the different trees and everything. Now, besides all of the cool colors and stuff that's in here, what exactly is this dimension used for? Oh, that's right. I think we can use this dimension to harvest different materials. Wait, wait, wait. These are ores. Colored core ores. Does this talk about this in the next chapter? The blank color cores dropped. Okay. dropped from color core ore found mostly at the bottom of the colored caves. You can, uh, this is can also be mined using the ore laser. Oh, interesting. So we have fortune on this, by the way, fortune one. Don't know if that matters, but there we go. We now have ourselves some blank colored cores. This allows us to make a few different things. Dark color cores. And then there's also the bright colored cores. Those are used to make rainbow cores when they're combined together. And a rainbow core allows us to make rainbow bricks. Oh, yes. Oh, and we can get a time in the bottle now. Wait. Oh, it's still unfamiliar, though. Maybe we unlock it whenever we finally get our cores. That's pretty cool. And then we also, with these cores, can produce up to 2,000 inside of a Stoneopolis generator. These ores are all over the place here. But I'll tell you what, it does feel kind of nice finally having something to sort of mine like this that's just not a stone wall. So yeah, I managed to find quite a bit of these blank colored cores and from the looks of it, they're gonna be incredibly important. So I'll be 100% needing to come back to this place to set up another drill, just like the one that we set up in our void dimension. So I guess without further ado, we should be able to teleport back to our dingy brown and stone colored base. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot less pretty here, but this is where our main infrastructure is at. So at least we have that going for us. Now, some other things we're going to need are some of these colors. So I guess in this dimension too, it'd also be a good idea to harvest a bunch of these different color types. That way we have a ton of different colors for our different kind of cores. Now it does appear like this is also where our laser drill will come into play because the laser drill is going to be uh, required in order to get a ton of these different uh, random uh, colors. So like the rainbow lens, right? So these color cores that we're gonna need to craft, all of these materials do come from the colored caves. So you do get all the stone and you also get these cores on top of it. So it looks like there's going to be a lot of automation in that regard down the road. But I guess what I could do for right now is I can just go ahead and grab a bunch of different colored materials and I should be able to place them inside of this crate here. So um, that way I can just pick them up and carry them as we move along. So I've gotten gray. There's another kind of gray. There's some brown, some white, some purple, <laughs> some orange. I mean, there's a little bit of everything all over the place. And so definitely worth grabbing as much of this as I can. And there we go. So after a bit of searching and a bit of figuring this out, bam, I now have... Uh, basically a stack of all the colors and I got a couple of extra colors that are just laying out here But in this container is at least one of all of the types which should now allow me to make the bright colored core and the dark colored core So at least having an understanding that I'm going to need both of these Helps me understand like what I need to prep for in the future. So combining these two together Makes a rainbow color core Okay and I wonder if these have like any special ability on their own. Like just right clicking these. Nope, doesn't do anything on its own. Probably just used exclusively for crafting. But it does let us make a time in the bottle, which feels kind of weird at this point. Like making this thing this far in. Because I'm already setting it like almost three days worth of playtime in this world. So making a time in the bottle at this point feels kind of odd. But I guess we can do it. Might as well do it. Because at this point, it is fairly cheap to make. It does require two of these rainbow cores. But these things as well are, are very, very cheap. So let's grab that. We'll craft this together. And then a time in the bottle. Perfect. So we have ourselves a time in the bottle, which is kind of nice. Do we get anything for this? Oh, it'd be nice if we just got rewarded a time in the bottle with like a certain amount of time in it. Or like infinite time. That'd be kind of cool. All right. But we can also make rainbow bricks which I am very tempted 
in changing my C back here to the rainbow bricks because I think that would be kind of a nice little uh, addition. You know what? I'm definitely going to do that. And you know what? It looks kind of interesting. Like just kind of glowing in the background. I really, I really do like that actually. I'm a little indifferent on it. I don't know. I, I like it, but at the same time, I'm like, I really like that stationary gold. But I mean, when it's in a certain color cycle, it looks fantastic. Now, another thing we can do is toss these into our crusher. And apparently our crusher will crush this down into rainbow dye, which is interesting in itself. Another rainbowed item. So this rainbow dye is used to one, make rainbow lenses, but it's also used for another thing, right? Ah, yes, it is used for hostile neural networks whenever we get to that point. Even though we don't know what this item is, it is definitely the prediction material that goes into your hostile neural network machines. So it's yet again, something that is 100% going to need to be automated. Now that other section mentions us placing this, or at least 10 of these, um, these rainbow color cores, placing at least 10 of them into our system. Now, the reason I'm doing 10 is because of the way that this caps in one bucket. So it is most effective for me to put 10 of them in here. Now with our particular setup, it should result in 10 of them going in and 40 pretty much coming out just like our diamond here. So if I put these in here, these are going to get processed into a interesting kind of raw meat slurry that is a part of what I'm assuming is, oh yeah, that's right. This dust gets turned into the extended crafting materials. It's still unfamiliar to us, but this is the black iron. Um, you can see right here, black iron dust. So this is a black iron ingot. Ah, but we're going to unlock that very soon. As soon as this gets done with all of its processing. And so just like all of our other materials going into our sieves and all of that fun stuff, we are going to just basically have to wait on this to process. And just like that, our black iron dust is done. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so perfect. So we've just got that unlocked. And now we just have to turn it into an ingot, which now we can see. And with a little bit of straining, there we go. We now have a few of those ingots. And that should be almost this entire chapter done. However, we do have to make a basic, uh, a, or a rainbow lens, not a basic lens. We do have to make a basic version of the lens and then we can apply this rainbow to it. And so last but not least, we should be able to now take one of these lenses and craft it together and get ourselves a rainbow lens. And that will be the Colored Caves chapter complete. Now, of course, we still have our other chapters to definitely complete. And well, the Star Power one is definitely one that is going to be a work in progress as making these machines, I think will be better suited once we have Applied Energistics automation fully up and running. And so that is something that I definitely want to get started on working on. And I think that's going to have to happen in the next episode. Definitely going to be building up on our Applied Energistics automation infrastructure. It's going to have to happen. And I think next episode is going to be the one where it happens in. Now, in the meantime, what I should do before we wrap up today's episode is get iron fully automated. I think iron fully automated is going to be a rather simple task since we already have all of the resources to do that. We just have to automate this engineer's workbench to do it. Now, the base of this automated workbench is going to look like this. And the next layer is going to have some belts, a few more of the light engineering blocks, and then we're going to have a couple slabs on the front. As soon as this is all done, we should be able to use the hammer on this block. And this makes a really cool looking multi-block. You can see right here, the belt is going to line into here. It's going to do the auto craft and out it should go. So I believe our input is this right here. So we have a couple of different input slots. And that is what's going to hopefully allow these ingredients to be put together. And I'm guessing on the engineer's blueprint, do I just put the blueprint in? Ah, and then we select what we want to craft. So I think we're going to need two of these, if I remember correctly, because we're going to need to produce this lapis alloy. And then we're also going to need to be able to produce the iron. Perfect. So after crafting another one, I can go ahead and place this blueprint in. So this one is going to be specifically crafting the lapis alloy. And then this should receive the other ingredients that will allow it to make the uh, the iron. So now to be able to automate this, here comes our routing nodes. And so I'm going to put some input routing nodes to send this into the network. And I'm basically going to use this. Now I went ahead and set up some other garden cloches that are producing lapis and redstone in our main system. 
that is connected to our drawer network. So I want to use these while they're here so I don't really have to move them around. And so I should be able to just pipe them over using our blood magic uh, node system. So let's go ahead and set this one. I'm going to say, hey, make sure we send Lapis. And then in this filter, I'm going to say, hey, let's go ahead and send Redstone. And just like all of our other systems, so long as we put this in and we don't have anything else connected to this, it should be able to work. Um, I am, however, going to need, let's see, to grab my blood magic wand. And I'm going to have to link these together. So I'm going to link those together. And then I'm going to link them to the main node. So this is connected to the main node, which does drag all the way through my base. And I can even access it over here. Now for my output routing node, that is going to get placed on the input side of this workbench. So this is the input side and I need to define a filter that is going to have charcoal in that filter. And I think what I want to do, um, so if I, if we grab charcoal, I think what I want to do is I want to change this up. Now I think I can have multiple things connected to one output. Um, so I, I basically have charcoal that's going to be sent to different locations. So I should be able to say, Hey, only send one here. Hey, on redstone, only send one in at a time. And then, Hey, only send one lapis at a time. So that is basically what is going to happen in this particular machine. So with that filter in, and then once I have it connected in, that should start sending those ingredients that are needed to craft this into the crafter. Now, this is where I need to actually take the item that this generates, and I probably want to route it into this workbench here. Um, so utilizing some belts, I should be able to do that. So let's go ahead and basically set up our belts in a way like this and just make sure that these are rotated in the correct direction. So that should send to this belt. This belt then needs to pipe into the workbench. And then for this, we get to have a little bit of fun. We are going to specify on these two drawers that we only want to pull out void ingots out of these compacting drawers. And I'm actually gonna use two separate nodes, just like so. And I wanna make sure that these are connected to the bottom, which they are. And so I should be able to put the filters in here and that should allow us to, for with these input nodes should allow us to pull out these void ingots. And then last but not least, right over here, we need to connect ourselves an output node. And then we need to set up a filter that is going to be void ingots. And then we also need charcoal because we're already going to be receiving that lapis. And then this output should have the uh, should end up with the items we need whenever we get this all linked in. Now, just when you thought we were almost done, there is still another step because we have to send this over to then be processed in our sieves. And so to get that final step done, I'm going to go ahead and right here should be where it auto outputs into an inventory. And so uh, I just basically need a input node. And on this input node, we need a filter. And that filter is going to be set to our void iron ingots, which are going to be contained inside here. So with those void iron ingots set in that filter, we need to add void iron ingots to our other filter that then gets sent over into this setup right here. So uh, right into this particular filter, we just need to add these ingots. And with that all connected to the network, it should know once we have everything linked. So now once we get the power connected, Ooh, I'm super excited because this should have our iron automated. I should have done this a while ago, but of course I procrastinate just like everyone else. Um, and this is now, I think, yeah, all we have to do is link it together, right? So let's make sure this can be connected here. And then we need to connect this one here. And I think those are all the nodes. They just need to connect over here. And with that, this should hopefully work. Now, the only thing that I don't know is if these will send directly into this. It should, but we may actually need to send it in with an inventory and belts. Okay, so it is working after doing a little bit of testing. I kind of messed up on my configuration on the output. I just had to make sure these were all set to only one at a time. Oh, and also, this has already got my belt spinning the wrong way. I need to turn my belt this way. There we go. And then that should be correct. And so that should set there. That's waiting. Oh, and this has backed up with charcoal. So this is a little bit of a problem. So I guess I forgot to basically say, hey, only make sure there's ever one 
at any given moment inside of this inventory. And so I've got to pull all of this charcoal out. Oh goodness, that's a lot. Yes, but that should now be functioning a lot better. You definitely want to make sure you have the limited limited uh, items going in there. For example, the regulation of the items. I mean, eventually the system will catch up with itself and so it won't be as big of a deal. I really won't have to worry about the lapis alloy because it will probably end up being a bottleneck anyways for the whole iron system. I'll tell you what, it is pretty cool watching this whole thing kind of work. You have this, which does like an assembly process, and then this comes down and does a press process. I really love these machines. They're so cool. But now one other task, we just need to check and make sure that our iron has made it over here. And has it? I believe it is. It does look like this is increasing. It just went down now, but... If we see another one go in, we definitely know it's working. So there we go. We now have Iron Automated. See, now that wasn't too bad, was it? Well, if that fried your brain, the next episode is definitely going to fry your brain even more because like I said, we're gonna dive into applied energistics automation, which is going to help us a ton with fluid crafting, especially when it comes to industrial foregoing crafting. So if you are looking forward to that, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and well, give this video a huge thumbs up as I would really appreciate that and it definitely helps out the channel quite a bit. And with that being said, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to Keaton. Thank you so much, by the way, for your amazing support. Thank you for choosing to support me over on Discord. And that is one of the best ways to honestly support. So thank you so, so very much for that. Guys, be sure to check out the Discord. Link down in the description below, or you can go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the amazing crew today. Be sure to check out my Twitch if you haven't already as well. Give me a follow if I'm not currently live because I do live stream roughly three to four days a week. So definitely check me live there. We have a lot of fun on that channel. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.